Chips and Chits, where today I will be continuing my classic Universal Monster Painting series by taking on Frankenstein, embodied in 1931 by Boris Karloff himself. This is the fifth video in the series where I paint the monster miniatures from the 2019 Ravensburger board game, mostly using the Citadel line of contrast paints, which I'll talk about in a minute here, along with a few more traditional acrylic paints and embellish the base a little bit with some uh, texture and landscaping. So in uh, the previous video of the series, if you remember, I painted the bride, and you can see that by clicking on the link in the, in the upper right-hand corner. And if you remember, her dress was uh, predominantly white, so we went ahead and primed that mini with Wraithbone. However, uh, Frankenstein here himself is a little bit darker in nature, especially his clothes and his skin is a little has a little bit more pop to it. So I went ahead and with a, I used Gray Seer as the primer. I hope this will keep uh, his dark colors a little bit more muted and his skin tone a little bit deeper. Now, even though I did prime him with a spray can, there, there was a few uh, hard to reach spots. And uh, one of those spots was right here. I'm just kind of pointing it out with my brush was underneath his shoe. So uh, I happen to have a pot of paint of gray sear that I went ahead and was able to get underneath there. Also, there's a couple like little these little nooks here, some deep crevices on both sides of his jacket where his pants meet. And also, too, uh, I did a little bit underneath his arms. They were a little hard to get the spray can underneath and get decent coverage. It looked a little thin. So I came in, uh, and as you can see, it's a pretty good match, one for one. You can't really see where I used the spray paint as opposed to where I did uh, some hand painting on this. The only two things that... Um, that I kind of really noticed about this sculpt, and it is a pretty iconic sculpt with his hands out there. You can kind of see him uh, coming at you like you would in the movies. But there's two things that kind of stuck out to me. One was there's a mold line here that goes across his uh, mid-stomach there. And uh, I suppose if you wanted to, you could really file that down. I know some people use even liquid uh, cement if you will, and that kind of melts the plastic a little bit, but I'm not going to really get into that kind of a detail. Also, on the sculpt, you know, uh, Frankenstein wouldn't be Frankenstein without his neck bolts, but uh, I don't know if you can see on camera, Let's see if I can get close up here. Uh, you can only get one of his bolts as present on, on the right, or excuse me, the left side of his neck. Whereas on the right side of the neck, it didn't really show up there. And uh, I don't know what the story is, but I'm going to go ahead and just with a fine, fine brush, I'm going to have to go ahead and paint that in a little bit later. So let's talk about the paints right now. Um, color scheme here, uh, pretty simple. There's not too much here. We've got just the undershirt. We've got the, the, the iconic jacket. We have his pants the shoes, his skin, and his hair. There's not too much to go on here. Uh, looking online, I looked at some uh, different uh, artwork over the years. Uh, well, you have like over 80 years, 90 years worth of artwork to look at, and everyone's interpreted his jacket uh, slightly differently. Uh, I've seen everything from a very, very dark purple to uh, black to a, a very dark brown. Um... For this build or this paint job, I'm going to use Saigor Brown. It's, it's, it's a very dark brown, one of the darker ones in the contrast paints. And I'll tell you why. I was going to go black, but we already have uh, Dracula, which that's going to be an upcoming paint. And he's already going to have uh, black. Since his hair, uh, Frankenstein's hair was going to be black, and I needed to do something dark with his pants, I figured... I'm going to break it up a little bit so his shoes and his jacket will be this uh, Saigor Brown. His uh, pants then and his hair will go ahead and be the contrast uh, of Black Templar paint right there. And then as far as his skin goes, if you remember, again, I think I might have mentioned this, but when I did the bride, I kind of thinned out her skin a little bit by uh, thinning down Plague Bear flesh. And additionally, she was primed in Wraithbone, which is a little bit brighter. 
this one here, I'm not going to thin this down at all. And uh, and we have a slightly darker, uh, not too much darker, but uh, this being the gray color, this is going to make uh, his skin uh, a little bit more rich than hers are. Also, I'm not going to spend a lot of detail. His mouth is closed here, so there's not really much to paint there. And his eyes, if you look at uh, artwork or if you see things from um, uh, the movie stills, Boris Karloff, half the time his eyes were half closed. And you might not be able to see this on camera, but I'll tell you, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on his eyes at all. Uh, again, his lids are ha closed half the time anyway, or look like he's half asleep. So there's not much to do detail there. The only other thing that I might do um, is I'm Citadel has some blood for the blood gods. Uh, it's some red gore paint. I might paint a, one or two small thin scars on his head. Uh, other than that, there's not much to do here on this model. I don't know what I'm going to do about the base yet, so uh, I'll just have to decide that later. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, readjust the camera and let's get started. Oh, I, I know, I didn't talk about the undershirt. So Dracula also has a very white undershirt here, and so I'm going to go for something um, um, probably gray. So. There's two, there's actually two Citadel uh, colors that I was thinking of. There's either this Basilicum, uh, or if I'm pronouncing that right, Basilicinum Gray, and this one called uh, Griff Charger Gray. And uh, the thing with Griff Charger Gray, uh, you can see it's got a slight blue t tint to it. So this is more traditional gray, I think. Uh, I don't know. I might even mix the two. I might do two parts Basilicum Gray to one part Charger Gray. Uh, I might thin that down a little bit with some medium just so it's not overly dark. Just so we get, uh, you know, we definitely have a noticeable difference there for the shirt. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get to painting. Okay, I went ahead and readjusted the camera here. And uh, in this pot here, I actually mixed... Uh, two parts basiliconum uh, gray to two parts of the actual contrast medium. Uh, one part uh, griff charger gray, but I still thought it came out a little too dark. So I actually came back in and added two drops of uh, apothecary white just to lighten it up just a tad. And we'll get right in here and start on his shirt. And... Just bring that down. I wanted to start on the inside shirt first because when we get to the part where we paint his um, jacket, that dark color there will go ahead and take care of uh, the seams there. So as you can see, it's coming on uh, pretty nice. Actually, not too bad. Uh, it turned out to be a nice gray color by adding a little bit of that apothecary white in there as well. Unfortunately, that seam line uh, might be a little prevalent right there, but uh, we're just going to live with it. So for right now, uh, because I don't want this to bleed over uh, with the other colors, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry, and then we'll come back and go ahead and start on some of the other colors. Okay, while we're waiting for that shirt to go ahead and dry, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and do the pants with the, the black Templar here. I've already uh, pre-shaken it up. I'm not going to do his hair though right now. I'm going to say do the hair later, but I've got my uh, uh, Army Painter Regiment brush at this point, and uh, I'm going to get in right away and just do his pants here.
let this dry and then we'll come back with the next color. Okay, we went ahead and readjusted the camera again and show you a little bit of progress here now that the uh, shirt and the pants are dry. Once the uh, Black Templar went ahead and dried, I came back in with some grace here and I just cleaned up a little bit around the cuffs on the shoes. I didn't like that I had a, a couple little splotches there on his shoes, uh, even though I'm going to paint that over with another dark color that Saigor Brown. I just wanted to clean that up, but otherwise it looks pretty good. Uh, at this point now, I'm going to go ahead and paint the skin here. I'm, I've got my Plague Bear flesh, and I'm going to take it right out of the pot. And the reason I decided to do that now instead of later is I think that the jacket, once I get to the jacket here, it'll be easier for me to paint uh, the jacket after the fact than it is to get that green on the neckline there. And I can clean up the the sleeves uh, a little bit right around his wrists. So with that being said, I'm going, I'm mixing up my pot. And I, once again, I'm using my regiment brush uh, from Army Painter to paint the hands. And for a little bit of the detail here, I'll tell you right now, I've got this uh, four brush and I'm just gonna get behind on the neckline here and maybe clean up a little bit of the wrist. So without further ado, opening up my pot of paint and loading up my brush and I'm getting right in there on the hands right now and let's see get right in there make sure I get those wrists turning it around yeah I like the look at how that's going right into the where the knuckles are on his hands I really like that I think this is a nice alternative not being thinned down as we did to the bride and again sometimes you'll see me I, I flip I flip the model upside down just so gravity can do its thing and, and it helps me get some of these straight lines there so let's just check where we are get a little bit more on this wrist there's a little bit of white right there I'm gonna load up my paintbrush just get a little bit more dab so I can get the wrist over here There we go. Yep, that's looking pretty good. It's a little pale here, so I'm just going to add a little bit more. Look at that. That's that's looking pretty nice, I think. Oh, we got a little bit of wrist on this side here. It's always good to kind of turn the model over and over in your hands, especially with this type of uh, contrast paint. Uh, just so you can see, make sure that you get all, cover all the white areas. And we got a little bit of a recess down here in his uh, wrists. And I'm gonna switch here in a second to my smaller brush. And when I say smaller, it's actually that four. And, and there we go. Get a little bit more on his neck right there. Get his ear. Okay, real quick, I'm going to change my brush out. Get some on, on back so I can get back of his neck going right there. Good, good, good. Get his, uh, his ear there on the side. Got a little bit much in his eye socket, so I'm going to take a little bit out. I'm going to have a paper towel here nearby. I'm just going to take a little bit of this excess out. Ooh, there's a section of his neck I missed right there. And we'll get the ear nice and done. We'll take some of that out of the eye, move it towards where the ear is. And I think that's pretty darn good. We'll make sure that we get high up on his brow because he has a pretty pronounced brow. And with that, I think at this point, oops, get, I'm going to turn it up upside down one more time. And just so I can get a little bit more color on his neck right there, trying to be careful, very careful not to get some bleed over on the shirt. And I think we did that. 
separating a little bit on the palms of his hands so with my brush that's got a little additional paint on it just going in there to darken that up just a tad and I think that looks pretty darn good so we'll go ahead and let that dry and then the next point we will go ahead with our brown and then our black for the hair so stay tuned hey everyone welcome back if you can't tell, I've repositioned the camera, and if the lighting looks a little bit different, uh, truth be told, it's a totally different day. The last time I picked up this miniature was two days ago, so full disclosure, uh, I had a little bit of family stuff come up, so I haven't got to uh, get back to this model until right now. And in an effort to save a little bit of time, I went ahead and painted the hair. This is straight black Templar, a contrast paint, and a little trick. You've probably heard me say this uh, more than once before. A lot of the times I like to turn my miniatures upside down uh, when I'm painting, especially when I'm doing uh, like lines so I don't... Um, so I let gravity do some of the effects for me and I pull away from the neck. That way I don't screw up any of that green that we got on the neck. But um, went ahead and painted that black Templar there on our figure. And today also, again, in an effort to save a little bit of time, I'm only going to paint the shoes. Uh, I'm going to treat the uh, jacket and the shoes with the same color. And I've decided to go with this Saigor Brown. Uh, another contrast paint. I've never used it before, but um, I think that the brown will look good on this jacket. And kind of like I said earlier in the video, your interpretation of what Frankenstein's uh, jacket or his color palette can be uh, is just about anything. Again, I've seen dark purple. I've seen very dark grays. You could do a black with Eschen gray highlights. Um, he, or you could do a very, very dark brown, which is in this case is what I'm doing. But in effort, again, to save time, I'm just going to do Saigor Brown on, on the shoes today. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up my paint. And right now I'm going to use this round brush. Um, it is a 4-0. So I'm going to go ahead and crack this open and load up my load up my brush here a little with some paint. And I got it right on. So remember, I touched up this the shoes earlier by using a little bit of the blacks here. It's coming in really thick right now. That's fine. I'm going to move this around, continuously move this paint around quite a bit. And if I get any on the base, that's okay as well because um, with the base, we're going to end up doing, we're going to cover up the base a little bit too with a, either a texture paint uh, which I haven't decided what I want to do yet as far as the base goes, but I'm just getting right in here. I don't really care that I'm getting a little bit uh, bleed over on the base. Like I said, we're, we're going to go ahead and cover that up. And I'm just getting, I'm going to soak up a little bit here from the other shoe that we just painted and bring it over to this, this one here. Just keep moving that paint around. Uh, Nice about this viscous paint, it doesn't dry immediately, and um, you have an opportunity to kind of move it around, and as it dries, it'll it'll do its separation. Uh, you can already see here, I don't know how, if you can easily see it or not, but it's starting uh, to do a little separation already there. I know I put it on a little thick here, that's okay. I can soak up, take some of this off, and just transfer it to the other shoe like so, which I'm doing now, get it right in there, and go ahead and get right under the cuff of his pants. I, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm trying not to get my hands in the middle of the camera shot, but uh, it's very possible that I am. So move, continue to move that around. Remember too, we want to make sure that we get under the shoe as well. Remember when we, when I mentioned when I primed this, there was a little bit of space underneath here uh, because his foot is turned up. So I just want to make sure that I get good coverage underneath that, which I am. And I'm just using my brush here, just kind of get the little white line. We shouldn't be able to see if he had uh, socks or not which I'm kind of doing right here, getting into the corners. 
and just touch up the heels a little bit. There we go. Get some of that going. I'm going to turn this around a little bit so hopefully you guys can see. And we'll go ahead and let this dry. But yeah, that turned out to be a pretty nice brown there. I think when it dries and does a little bit more separation, it'll look really good. And we're going to do, uh, it'll probably be a little bit more pronounced for the jacket. But I think uh, that'll give a really good strong contrast to his uh, green skin there. Remember, I'm not going to do anything to his eyes. Uh, after we do the jacket and let that dry, I'm going to come back in and we will do the little uh, silver bolts on his neck. And we'll probably add like a little scar there uh, somewhere on his forehead as well. But for the time being, uh, that's uh, his shoes are done. I'm still thinking about the base. I don't know if I want to do a texture paint or paint something. Uh, I, I, I saw another uh, individual online do a technique where he painted like cobblestones, freehand cobblestones. And that's that looked pretty cool too. So I might give that a whirl. But for the time being... There's Frankenstein there. We did Cygore Brown and the shoes, and we will see you back in a few minutes. Okay, as you can see, I've repositioned the camera once again, and I wanted to get a little bit closer up and show you some of the things I've done off camera. One of the first things I did is, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the bolts on his neck, uh, one was pronounced, one wasn't so much. So I took my Army Painter uh, silver plate metal paint, and with this uh, very fine spotter brush here, I went ahead and just uh, dotted in the one that's actually pronounced here on the left side of his neck and just kind of guessed and kind of did a quick dot on the right side of his neck, even though the bolt uh, somehow got lost in the molding process. Also, just for some visual interest, I did a two parts water to one part uh, flush wash here. And I mixed that up and I just kind of did a little stripe right across his mouth. It's very subtle. Uh, however, if you get close up into it, you might see a little bit of color shift there just to give his lips a little bit of something else. Uh, totally optional. You can even go over this a second time if you want it a little bit more pronounced. But right now I just did it the one time. But probably the most significant thing I've done is I've been thinking about the basing quite a bit. And I wanted to show you something that's kind of a work in progress. Uh, I decided that I wanted him, uh, instead of using a lot of texture paints like so many of the other models or miniatures that I've done, I wanted to try something new and add him like as if he were walking on some cobblestone streets. So I have this uh, stuff called green stuff, and it's a, kind of an epoxy putty. And as you can see, it comes in a blue side and kind of a real pale yellowish green side. And I cut a little portion off, and you mix it up in your hands, and you get something that looks like a darker green color, as you see here. And I shaped it onto uh, the base of the miniature. And then I don't have any sculpting tools. That might be something I might want to purchase in, in the future. But using the back of my hobby knife here, uh, I went ahead and just kind of made some random indentations to make it look as if there's cobblestones. And I know it doesn't look like much right now, but uh, after I prime it, which we'll talk about in a second, and paint it, uh, I, I am hoping we get the effect that he's walking down or part of the street. But before I went, when I rolled this down uh, here and to help get rid of some of the thumbprints, I went out into my yard and I found like this little rock and I washed it off and with the texture side of the rock, just kind of randomly pushed it in uh, right there. So it wasn't, uh, so you can kind of get a, a, an actual uneven texture actually on, on these cobblestones. So what I'm going to do next, and probably do this off camera just to save time as I've got this surface primer here. It's a gray. I will go ahead and prime this area here. And speaking of which, it, it, it says to give about an hour and a half to two hours for it to cure. I went ahead and let it cure uh, all night long. I, I, I did this last night and then uh, right now it's pretty hard. So it's cured for a good 10 hours at least. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and, oh, and one other thing uh, before I forget, you want to work with a lot of water too. So one of the things I've done down here is I have some wax parchment paper and let me back out the camera just a little bit. So when, when you first mix this stuff up, uh, I went ahead and uh, put it on this parchment paper so it wouldn't stick and using my hobby knife, I kind of rolled it out a little bit so I could get like a flat uh, surface and then I put it on here and then uh, using some water because this stuff does get a little tacky and sticky. Uh, so you constantly want to kind of dip your fingers in and kind of help shape it up. And then uh, eventually that water will go ahead and evaporate. And you could put little pock marks in there if you wanted to, but uh, uh, I didn't for the most part. I, I kind of wanted to see how it was going first. But uh, then again, so getting back to the priming here, we'll go ahead and prime this in this ghost gray. Once the primer is done, we'll give it an undercoat of black completely just so we can get those grooves in there really nice. And then we'll go for a stone stone look using different dry paints and washes. And then this part here, that's um, uh, the, 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 the clean part of the base, excuse me, I'm getting tongue tied. We'll go ahead and use a texture paint after all here. And then we'll add some, a uh, little bit of grass and uh, maybe a yellow flower because I believe in the movie, uh, the original movie, there is a scene where he is giving a flower to a young girl. Uh, there's kind of a sweet little moment there, but uh, we want to kind of a, give an homage back to that. So with that, I'm going to go off and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead, like I said, prime this up and we'll see you back in a few. Okay, you can now see that I've painted Frankenstein's base completely black after we went ahead and primed that earlier with that gray primer. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start dry brushing these cobblestones. And I went ahead and picked out uh, some gradients of gray. I'm going to start with uh, an Eschen gray and then work up to the next hue, uh, Storm Vermin Fur, which tends to have a little bit of brown in there. Uh, next, we're going to go to Dawnstone. And then finally, some administratum gray for my lightest. And then after that's all dry, we'll go ahead and add a wash to it and we'll do some other elements. As far as the uh, part that it does not have the cobblestone, I think I'm going to go ahead and use some Sterling mud in there. I'm not 100% sure. We'll, we'll make that decision. I'll make that decision once uh, the cobblestone parts are dry, but I didn't want to add that until I got the dry paint on first. So with, uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the camera a little bit here as I do this, and uh, you can go ahead and watch along. Okay, um, go ahead and slow this video back down and show you the effect there of the cobblestones. Um, at this point now, I'll go ahead and let this dry and I'm going to go ahead and apply a um, uh, the texture paint and when that's dry, we'll go ahead and add a wash to that. And I have a wash that's kind of got a dirty brown 
grimy look to it that'll make those um, crevices really pop out and kind of dull out these uh, light surfaces just a tad bit more so they're not overly bright but I think that's a pretty good start right here to this um, uh, texture of these cobblestones so we'll see you in a few and uh, we'll go from there all right everyone in an effort just to save some time you can see I just pushed ahead right to the end here so let's talk about some of the stuff I did to complete uh, Frankenstein as I kind of rotate this around if you remember in the last cut, I finished some dry brushing with Administratum Gray, which would have been the uh, lightest uh, uh, highlights there on my uh, handcrafted cobblestone. So once that went ahead and uh, cured there, I uh, decided to put in some texture paint there where his shoes are and off to the sides. And basically what that was is just the uh, Sterling mud there. And I worked that in underneath the shoes and... Uh, you know, right up to where the cobblestone ends there, kind of blended that in a little bit and waited for that to go ahead and dry. Once that dried, I um, went ahead and did some washes and I started first on the cobblestone and I used dark tone uh, just to get into those grooves right there to make those cobblestones like really pop out there as you can see kind of the outlines. And um, that kind of dulled it down, but I wanted to uh, introduce a couple other hues in here. So I have two other washes that I kind of mixed together here. Uh, I did two parts of this terrain wash, which is a dark brown and gray. And it actually has even, a, I would say, some hints of green on there. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a little bit of hint of green in there as well. And uh, then finally, I mixed in about one part of this light dirt, which has an interesting feature to it. Again, it's, it has a little bit of a light brown, but when it dries, it kind of almost it has a very matte and dusty finish to it. So I went ahead and slapped a little bit of that on uh, to the cobblestones there as well. And uh, just so to bring you some uh, tonal variation. And then on the once the Sterling mud was completely dry, I went ahead and took some uh, layer paint here, this Elysian Gray, and I just dry brushed a little bit on some of the high points there to kind of simulate a little bit of grass or moss or something in there. As far as the uh, landscaping materials go, this is all from uh, Army Painter, and uh, this is just some static grass that I applied with a little bit of Elmer's white glue. And the same with this uh, uh, lichen right here. And then I think earlier in the video, I mentioned a little bit of the classic uh, flowers, the, the the daisy or whatever he hands the little girl there at the, uh, at the water side. So I wanted to go ahead and incorporate that in there. And then finally, one other optional detail, uh, totally up to you guys. I'm going to zoom in. But as you can see on his forehead here, I used uh, my thinnest, smallest brush I could. And I used Citadel's um, uh, Blood for the Blood God paint. I just wanted to get like one little bloody scar in there uh, just to give it a little bit more interest. But overall, uh, I'm, I'm calling this guy done. Frankenstein is done and he can now join his bride. So with that being said... I hope you enjoyed this video here. Um, if you did, go ahead, please leave me a comment. Go ahead and subscribe. I've got two more in this painting series here. I still have The Invisible Man to do. And I have uh, Dracula, which should be kind of fun too. So hopefully uh, you guys stick around and stay tuned for those upcoming in the next few weeks.